What's up my Wizards Deb from the place down there and it is a great day to be a Magic player. The first official day of spoiler season for Battle for Zendikar. Sure, we've gotten some things, but we got all the really crazy stuff today, it turns out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just run through some of these real quick because I don't know if you can tell. I'm pretty excited. We got some really, really cool stuff today. Let's start with something interesting that I'm not sure what it's going to do. Um, this is Deep Sea Scavenger right here, and it does all the things, you know. It's colorless, it ingests, it has death touch, and you can draw cards and ingest something after you draw the card. Um, really good in the late game, it turns out. It's cool to have an early game creature that serves as a roadblock. That's not bad. Attacks, you know, I've, I've, death touches can't be blocked by good things, basically. Um, so that's cool, too. You know, I'm just not really sure. There are some people saying, like, modern for this. I, I don't know about that. I don't know if I agree with that at all. I'm not really sure why the card is rare, either. I'd like it to be uncommon, but maybe it's just way better than I think. Here's Planar Outburst, another sort of in hostilities, Wrath of God variant. We see these in a lot of sets, you know, another set, another sort of substandard uh, Wrath of God. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm not really a huge fan of this. It's not like I would rather play in hostilities. I might, you know. We will see Manlands in this uh, sitch, which you'll, I'll give you one in just a minute, actually. I'm not really sure how great this is, although it may see some play, you know, I just, I'd probably rather play t Tragic Arrogance, honestly. Here's Desolation Twin, and it's hilarious, <laughs> right? You get 20 power for 10 mana, what's wrong with that? Um, and, by the way, this is good against, you know, control and decks that counter and stuff like that, because you're guaranteed to get a 10-10 one way or the other, so that's, that's really cool right there. I actually don't think the card is horrible or anything, but I'm not sure it's going to see too much play. Here's something I'm really hot on, actually, probably more than I should be, but I actually think this card is fan freaking tastic amazing wonderful great this is bring to light um tony and i have been working both of us on um four and five color control this is absolutely perfect this is exactly what that deck wants i love that it's simic colors that's a little weird and awesome at the same time i love simic um and this can go get a lot of things anything you know five usually you're gonna you know spend th three colors of mana i would imagine in the current format but that allows you to go get a lot of stuff and just play it or put it right on the battlefield of its creature so this card i am almost 100 percent sure we'll see some play because it's just tutor for anything and play it for free are you freaking serious tutor for a creature instant or sorcery play it for free that will that's freaking it that's nuts and that will see play Here's Lumbering Falls, the first man land uh, that they've spoiled, is what I was talking about a minute ago. Yeah, not bad at all. Produces two colors of mana and becomes a 3-3 three, three hex proof, which is insane, it turns out. And man lands are always good, you know, they survive mass removal, you know, sorcery speed mass removal, and all kinds of stuff. You know, Ruinous Path, that's a sorcery, a lot of people are going to be playing that. Doesn't hit man lands unless you, you know, you do it on their turn, but a lot of times, obviously, do it on your turn, you'll be swinging in. So I, I have always liked Man Lands. I'm super happy that we got him back, especially in a set with Landfall. It's really, really cool. Welcome back, Man Lands. Here's Scythe Leopard, the uh, answer to Step Links in the first you know, time we had Landfall. Um, this I really, really like, actually, you know? There's going to be turns where we're able to put more than one land into play. You know, we have fetches and things like that, so that's cool. Also, things like Animus Awakening, Mrs. Pilgrimage, yada yada, so. I think this is a really, really cool card. We just, we're sort of lacking good green one-drops right now. You know, Servant of the Scale, Honored High Arc, those are some of the best we can do post-rotation. Those cards just aren't incredibly good. You know, Servant of the Scale's pretty all right, and Honored High Arc will probably be made to work, but I think this is a good addition to the Green One Drops Club, and could also make Stompy decks more of a reality, you know. Really do enjoy this card, like the design, simple and great. Here's the last Eldrazi we'll cover today. This is Conduit of Ruin right here, and I think it's hilarious. <laughs> this is very, very cool, you know? You go get basically, what, any colorless guy, any Eldrazi for the most part. You can also get artifact creatures with it, that's cool. Any Eldrazi that's seven or more, which is a lot of the really, really good ones, Ulamog included. Then the next turn, you can cast that guy for two mana less. So, that's insane, right? I mean, that's good. I'm not really sure how much standard play we're going to be seeing here, but I'm almost sure this will see play in Commander. That's definitely, almost certainly, going to happen. Cool to see another Commander Eldrazi thing a little more fleshed out than the existing Commander Eldrazi thing, which is not very fleshed out. Um, but, that being said, I think this is a really fun card. I'm not really sure how much standard play it might see, but, but, it might see 
all the standard play. You know, it's really hard to judge these Eldrazi right now. And I think that all in all, this is a, a at least a fair card. But it's actually, it's probably the opposite of that for your opponents. This might be my favorite card spoiled all day. <laughs> this is Stasis Snare, and it's, it's freaking just look, look at this card, guys. It's it's uh, an Oblivion Ring, right? I mean, we're creatures strictly. Um, that has flash. <laughs> this is what Oblivion Ring likers, you know, the people that play those cards, which I, I've always loved Banishing Light, Oblivion Ring, these are great cards. They always see standard play. And this one is no different. It probably is the best one ever printed. Now, obviously, um, the, it can't go get, or it can't hit anything. You know, it can't hit Planeswalkers, artifacts, you know, enchantments even. But Creatures, I think, is good enough <laughs> to make this card see a lot of play in standard. Just the uh, the fact that it has flash is absolutely cray cray. Like I've, we we're gonna be playing this card for the next year. Just letting you know, lots of people all the time are gonna be playing this card. Flash is what we have always wanted on O-ring. We finally got it. Thank you, thank you, Wizards. Here is Undergrowth Champion, which some people are underwhelmed by so far, but I actually think that this is much, much, much better than it looks upon the first read, you know? Um, obviously, it can still die to spot removal. That's, that's a thing, definitely. Um, there are times, um, especially if you play it on curve, where you can't, you know, it can't protect itself yet. Um, which is which is sometimes a problem, um, but it, especially if you play it fourth turn and have a land to back it up, you know that's really good. Uh, I just I like a lot of things about this card. You know, it's really really hard to kill, especially in combat situations. Cards like that are usually really good. We need a replacement for Corsair of Crufix, and a lot of people think we're just going to play more Death Mist Raptor, which I can get on that train. But I think that this is also a very very good thing in the early game. Good speed bump, which is what we know Corsair as. You know, this doesn't gain you to life, but this will block and survive 90% of the time. And I really, really do like the card. I think it will see some play too. This is not just, there's a reason this card is mythic. I do not think this is a 50 cents mythic. And to close out the day, why don't we talk Planeswalkers, right? That's what we're all here for. Um, first, I want to talk about Obnixilis, who I am, I am jacked for and underwhelmed by at the same time. I think his first two abilities are actually very, very good. I like that he comes in with five loyalty, and I actually like his ultimate more than some people do. I want to go ahead and say this too about his ultimate. You, uh, if you ultimate him and then play Days Undoing, you've just dealt 14 damage. That's not bad at all. Um, but that that aside, you know. Also, when you ultimate, you say go and they take two damage, you know, so that that's also there. But I think that being able to bust a creature and being able to draw a card both fantastic abilities. Just really, really good. He protects himself with that second ability. Card advantage is always good on a Planeswalker. I do like Obnixilis. I think you'll see play in the right decks. But here's the one that I'm super excited for. This is Kiora, Master of the Depths. We finally get a decent Kiora. The last Kiora was fine, but two loyalty was a huge, huge problem on that card. This comes in with four, lo four loyalty, as many as you paid the mana for, you know, four mana, four loyalty, and can do cool things for you on the first turn, or that it's in play. What I want to say about this, first of all, is that you play Mana Guy second turn, third turn Kiora, untap the Mana Guy in the land, you now have two mana open on the third turn, and the Planeswalk in play. That's pretty cool. With five loyalty. So that's pretty awesome, leaving two mana up either to protect the Kiora or, you know, yourself for that matter, with removal spells, counter spells even. Or you could always play um, a creature or something like that, you know, another permanent on that turn, you know. You can just make your third turn very, very good or even your fourth turn really, really awesome because that'll leave, you know, uh, three mana up in all if you have a mana guy out. So there's there's definitely awesome things about that plus one that people aren't really talking about yet. A lot of people are disappointed by the plus one. The plus one is fine. It makes her effectively cost three mana the turn she comes into play, which is always good. And untapping a creature is better than you might think. You know, putting a guy back on defense after swinging is pretty cool and puts them off guard. You know, they've already looked at the combat math and said, well, I can block this guy and she'll be tapped so I can swing him with that guy. And, you know, when you play the Kiora and untap the guy, that changes their whole outlook on things and can make what they did in combat just a bad decision at that point. So I like her plus one. Her, uh, her second ability, though, that's the one, man. I really, really, really like this second ability, especially in Soul Tide decks because the extra cards go into the graveyard. That's really, really good for Soul Tide decks. They almost certainly will play her. Um, and not only that, but you get, you know, a creature out of it and a land if you want it or a land, no creatures, whatever you want to do. If you want, you can just toss off all, all, all of them. 
<laughs> into the graveyard, and that's not bad for Soul Tie either. I definitely will see play in those decks. Really, really, really can't stress how much I like that second ability. And her ultimate is just fine, too. There has been some confusion about this, by the way. How it works is you get the emblem. The emblem says whenever you a creature you control into the battlefield, you know, a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it fights a guy. That's the, that's the end of that. And then you get three, you know, 8-8 eight, eight tokens. So it's not like every time a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it fights a thing, and then you get three 8-8 eight, eight guys and they fight things. There's been weird confusion about that. And what happens is you get the emblem, creatures you control, you know, fight when they enter the battlefield, and then you get three Krakens once. It happened that, the three Krakens happens once. Um, but you'll almost certainly take out three creatures with the Krakens and have, you know, 24 power at least on the board to swing in with the next turn. So her ultimate is absolutely crazy. It will often say you win the game. Um, even against, you know, a huge Eldrazi and stuff, this obviously won't kill Ulamog because it's indestructible, but we'll kill nearly every other Eldrazi that we're looking at. Um, sometimes, you know, two of them. <laughs> so that's not bad. Or even, even three if they're playing, you know, the smaller ones. So I like every single thing about this Kiora, and it's not often I go on and on about a Planeswalker's ultimate, but this ultimate is very, very good. I think every single thing she does is awesome, and we're finally going to see a Kiora that sees some play, which means that the Simic color combination will see a lot more play, which I am always fine with. I love, love Simic. So, yeah. That's all of our spoilers for today. That was kind of a lot of stuff, and it's all really, really good. Besides the Planeswalkers, what's your favorite? You know, how do you feel about Undergrowth Champion, Conduit of Ruin, Stasis Snare, maybe the thing that I'm most excited for, other than probably Kiora. Um, love that we're getting Manlands back, because Wizards gave us so much to talk about, so let's do that. By the way, I should tell you this, Mono Black coming up. That's our next deck tech. It is $10 Mono Black, and we are doing the triple tech. Three different techs in one video. I'm going to try to do it as quickly as possible too. So subscribe if you haven't done that yet so you can see that content and all the other spoilers coming up. Do us a favor, like, share, and comment if you enjoyed all this content. There will be more of it coming, so stick with us. I'm Dev from SVMTG. Thanks for watching, my wizards.